Hello. Against Richard Cromwell by Sir Henry Vane from 1659. Among I, all the people of the universe, I know none who have shown so much zeal for the liberty of their country as the English at this time have done. They have, by the help of divine providence, overcome all obstacles and have made themselves free. We have driven away the hereditary tyranny of the House of Stuart at the expense of much blood and treasure in hopes of enjoying hereditary liberty after having shaken off the yoke of kingship. And there is not a man among us who could have imagined that any person would be so bold as to dare to attempt the ravishing from us that freedom which cost us so much blood and so much labour. But so it happens. I know not by what misfortune we are fallen into the error of those who poisoned the Emperor Titus to make room for Domitian, who made away Augustus that they might have Tiberius, and changed Claudius for Nero. I am sensible these examples are foreign from my subject, since the Romans in those days were buried in lewdness and luxury, whereas the people of England are now renowned all over the world for their great virtue and discipline, and yet suffer an idiot, without courage, without sense, nay, without ambition, to have dominion in a country of liberty. One could bear a little with Oliver Cromwell, though contrary to his oath of fidelity to the Parliament, contrary to his duty to the public, contrary to the respect he owed that venerable body from whom he received his authority, he usurped the government. His merit was so extraordinary that our judgments, our passions might be blinded by it. He made his way to empire by the most illustrious actions. He had under his command an army that had made him conqueror and a people that had made him their general. But as for Richard Cromwell, his son, who is he? What are his titles? We have seen that he had a sword by his side, but did he ever draw it? And what is of more importance in this case? Is he fit to get obedience from a mighty nation who could never make a footman obey him? Yet we must recognise this man as our king under the style of protector, a man without birth, without courage, without conduct. For my part, I declare, sir, it shall never be said that I made such a man my master. Thank you.